What's up dudes, I'm back with another video. Today we are talking about everything happening at Download Festival 2024 besides the band. So everything from food vendors to stalls to rides to the map and everything in between. So yeah, I've been waiting for the map to be released obviously to do this video because uh, there's a lot on there to talk about um, and there's a lot going on at Download everywhere else. This is by far the most stuff they've put on outside the band. Um, back in the day, the festival used to be quite bleak um, once the bands had finished, uh, which is why the campsites back in the day were so insane because they really didn't give us much to do. Uh, luckily now there is so much to do at this festival. I don't think you even need to see any bands. You could just go and do all the stuff that's just extra um, surrounding the festival. So yeah, let's go through it all. Let's talk about it. We'll take a look at the map as well. And yeah, let us do this. Now I know this video isn't about the bands, but I just have to mention one thing that's really been bugging me. People asking Download to announce the secret set. Now I'm not sure if this is just people trolling or not, but if you announce a secret set, then it's not secret. Um, I know before people have said, oh, you know, there's been a, there's a secret set of download um, and it hasn't really been a secret because you found out the same day or a day before or whatever. That is not a secret set. What download used to do is an actual secret set like Metallica in 2003, uh, Blackstone Cherry one of the years as well, where you literally do not know who is coming onto the stage until they come out onto the stage. That is a secret set. It's supposed to be an exclusive thing at the actual festival that no one knows about until it's actually happening to sort of, you know, get some buzz going. Um, and yeah, I think it's a really cool idea to do a proper secret set. So if Download announce it, then even Download don't know how to do a secret set. So Annie Copping has said there will be one. Um, so I'm expecting it to be old school uh, for a band or, you know, I don't know how well known the band's going to be to literally just appear on a stage and start playing. So I'm a big fan of that. Hopefully they do that and they don't announce it because if they do announce it, it's not a secret set. Right, we're going to talk about all the stuff that's happening around uh, the bands now, run through all that. And then lastly, we're going to look at the map once we know what all of this stuff actually is that I'm going to uh, run through with you. So first of all, the mega store, um, so the big download store is back. Um, they've got like special collabs and a load of stuff. Personally, most of it's a load of tat, if I'm being honest. I mean, you guys know how much I love download. I don't actually have that much download stuff. Um, I like a lot of the stuff, of course, that download does, but I do also think that a lot of it, personally for me, is a massive waste of money. Hey, if it's your thing and you want to buy and have a whole room full of download stuff, you go for it. This is not me saying anything against you. Um, I just think a lot of it is overpriced tat, but there are some really, really cool things in there as well, but I will definitely go in and have a walk around um, and you guys should too, because um, last year they done a really, really good thing about making it big and having loads of weird chairs and loads of cool stuff in there. Um, and I think they're gonna go even harder into it this year. So yeah, definitely check out the mega store if you get a chance um, and it is back at download. Now, one of the biggest announcements of the festival, the thing that should be considered the biggest announcement outside of bands being announced, it's probably the fourth headliner of the weekend it's the co-op. Um, yes, the co-op will be back at Download. It's been a savior at the festival ever since 2019. I think we can all agree that it is a great thing for the festival. Also, this year they are doing, I'm not sure if they've done it last year. I've only been alerted to it this year. They're doing members prices. So if you are a co-op member, you will get things slightly cheaper than people that aren't members. So I do recommend you signing up. I think it only costs you like a pound to sign up uh, for them and you can get the app on your phone and put it into your wallet and stuff. So I've done that because I want the um, members prices, lunch deals and stuff. So I do recommend that you guys make use of that but the co-op is awesome um, anyone that hasn't been to download before it is literally a mini co-op um, they play music in there they have a dj it's a hell of a lot of fun it's the most fun shopping i've ever had um, it's all good vibes and the prices aren't that bad um, they're only just above what you would normally get at retail so if you're looking to not bring a lot of food with you or you're not bringing a lot of food with you, you can rely on the co-op. You might have to queue for a while to get in, uh, but once you do, it is worth it. So yes, 
co-op is back i'm really happy about that you guys should be too um that's awesome another massive announcement we have a new stage at download uh, which i believe will be in and around district x um we'll look at that when we look at the map but yes the outpost stage um which has loads of weird stuff on it um yeah survival skills um live fire cooking demos um chili eating contest hot dog eating contest um really weird stuff i don't know quite how interactive and strange this stage is gonna be it kind of um, reminds me of stuff that you get at like market stalls uh, when the guy has the microphone and he's trying to like sell you stuff I don't know what this is gonna be um, but yeah it says Weber barbecue demo so who knows um, but I think this could be quite a lot of fun actually and it's something different for download and I'm sure some of you uh, would like to get involved in the hot dog and the chili eating do not eat chilies at a festival okay this is me an experienced festival goer telling you do not eat chilies at a festival you will have the worst weekend ever so i definitely won't be eating any chilies hot dog eating contest i don't know how many i could do but i give it a good go but you guys should too as well uh, and of course they're showing the euros games this year so the scotland opening game against germany um and the england serbia game i believe um which will be kicking off as well. So yeah, I probably will catch the England game if there's time. Um, I think that's on Sunday and Sunday looks pretty stacked for me. So I don't know if I'm going to watch that, although I really do want to watch the England game. Um, but yeah, it's a cool new stage. Um, I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know how it's going to function, um, but there is lots of different stuff on there that we haven't had at download before. So yeah, I would say if you're going past or if you're just curious about it, I think you should go check out the outpost stage. I think, um, yeah, it may be fun. The Tattoo Studio is back at Downloan again. I think that they're in the arena. We'll have a look at the map um, when we get to it. But yeah, something I've always wanted to do is get a Downloan tattoo, but I've never had the time. Obviously, I'm just trying to watch as many bands as I possibly can, but I do recommend you go there. Some of the guys from the Crooked Rook that are friends of mine will be tattooing there. They are very good, um, but I've only ever heard good things about people getting tattooed at Download. They have loads of flash, I think, that they put out on the website before the festival starts, um, but I think there is stuff there that you can get as well. They have in the books, which is obviously exclusive to just getting it there. They have themed download ones. You can get non-download tattoos if you really want to, loads of stuff. Um, but yeah, I do recommend going. I think it would be a lot of fun. If I had the time, I would get one done. I'm probably more likely to get one done outside of download uh, but you never know you might see me in there at some point it could possibly happen uh, but yeah if you do fancy a tattoo at download you have the availability to do it fairground rides of course will be a part of district x and just outside uh, from my understanding there is going to be more than normal um, i've heard a lot of talk about a ghost train and some other stuff as well they used to have an awesome ghost train at download uh, but they haven't had that for a few years so hopefully uh, they have some more rides it feels like the first bit of District X when you walked through. I mean, they were probably leaving it sparse because of the amount of people that were there, uh, but it did seem like you could fit in more stuff. It did seem a bit empty last year. So hopefully uh, they'll fill that space this time with more rides and more stuff for us to do. So if you like rides, hopefully they should have some decent ones. We have something new at Download, uh, which is going to be really cool, which is the Liquid Death Skate Ramp. Um, back in the day, we had the Snickers Bowl, which was similar, way bigger, so to a much bigger scale. I'm not sure the size of this or what it's going to be. We might be able to pinpoint it on the map and get an idea of size. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a cool skate ramp with pro BMXs and pro skateboarders. So something cool and different uh, brought to download. I never thought they would bring back something similar to the Snickers Bowl. So this is a massive win for us. And if you're a fan of any of those genres, um, I think you're really, really going to enjoy it. And I think in the on the Friday when I've got less bands, to see I might go and check it out we have loads of different types of bars at download this time as well there is a new biker bar the gooseneck inn I know what you're thinking how can you have a biker bar if there's no motorbikes I don't know I haven't seen it yet so the gooseneck inn is going to be a biker bar I don't know what that means there's no pictures of it and I, I'm guessing there'll be no motorbikes or maybe they'll just put some motorbikes out and you can ride around the arena um we <laughs> We also have the Tap House, which is returning. The Beer Hall and Rocktail Cocktail is back as well. I know a lot of people really enjoy that. Also, for you guys that don't drink alcohol or, you know, just want to have a drink that's not alcoholic, we have the Lono Bar, which is serving only non-alcoholic drinks. So for all you guys that don't drink, and I know there is quite a lot of people that come to download, you know, you don't have to drink to have fun. That's fine. You do you. Um, but yeah, the Lono Bar might be one for you. Uh, but also, it might be nice if you 
want to have a drink but it's not an alcoholic drink just in case you're really hung over or something although sometimes the hair of the dog is the only way you can go with it uh, so yeah so loads of different bars and places you can drink i remember going to the beer hall i think last time and trying to get some shade and get out of the sun obviously at the moment the weather's saying it's going to be okay weather not great weather uh, we might see a little bit of rain, I think, uh, but it looks like it will be okay. So hopefully we won't have to hide from the sun. More acoustic performances happening across the weekend as well. I think that's something that's really, really cool that this festival does now with these little acoustic sets that you get band members and bands to do. Uh, the one I'm most interested in would be Charlie Simpson uh, on the Friday. I believe he's doing it till midnight till 1am. I am really, really interested in that because I love Fight Star and I have a feeling that he's probably going to play a few Fight Star songs songs acoustic so uh, if that's something that you're interested in um, I might be there as well singing along to those songs depending how late Vicky can stay awake on Friday night um, but yeah I'm really looking forward to that I think acoustic performances really good little cool extra uh, that just adds to the festival now I saw a number on the website it says that there's 80 different independent traders now I don't know if that counts as just shops that you can buy stuff from or food vendors as well, but it says 80 different vendors. Uh, I know some of them are doubled, you know, you get easy cheesy in a couple of places. Um, so 80 different vendors, even if that was food and stalls, that is quite a lot um, if you spread it just across, you know, the arena and the campsites as well. So I think Download really is trying to pack this festival out with as much food and as much stuff that we can buy basically. So props them for that, but yeah, 80 different independent traders. If you haven't heard already, uh, the podcast that I do with my very good friend Adam Cox, Dear Download, we are playing the Courtyard stage, which is in the RIP section of Download. Um, it's amazing um, that we're actually playing it. We've been booked. So we're going to be doing a live podcast for 45 minutes talking about all sorts of stuff that's happened at Download. So hopefully that should be fun. So if you are an RIP, on the Thursday, um, I think we're on around three o'clock. Uh, so if you do get the chance, come to the courtyard stage and say hello and watch us, please, because um, I don't want to turn up and see that there's no one there. Hopefully there will be, um, and hopefully the weather will hold out for us. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, me and Adam have really good banter, so um, I think it's going to go down really well as a live podcast. So yeah, dear download on the courtyard stage. Come and check us out. When we were at the media day, um, if you don't know already, something we got invited to as part of the download. I have done a video on that before. Go and watch that. Um, they said that there was going to be a farmer's market. Now, I haven't looked at the map in any detail because I wanted to save it for this video. I mean, I've looked at it as a whole, but I haven't zoomed in to look at where things are. So if there's no farmer's market on there, then I don't know why they said there's going to be a farmer's market on there and they said there was going to be loads of local produce and stuff uh, not sure how that would work at download um, but I still think it's a really good idea so I'll be interested to see if it's on the map but apparently we were told there was a farmer's market uh, that was going to be at download so we'll have to look at that and see if it's actually there and finally I'm just going to mention this one thing before we look at the map obviously there's going to be loads of stuff that I haven't talked about that's on the map um, and we can sort of just discover that stuff together but there will be a silent disco. I don't know exactly where that's gonna be. And we did have that a download a few years ago. I'm not quite sure where they took it away. Maybe it was just difficult to manage and to keep equipment going. But you know, Bloodstock and Trees and every other festival I go to has a silent disco. So I'm surprised that download haven't done it for the last couple of years. But yes, there will be a silent disco. Um, it might be on the map. We'll have a look in a second. Uh, so I don't know where it's gonna be. I'm sure that there'll be some information coming out about that but I do love a silent disco. Right, just before we move on to looking at the map in detail, I overlapped last year's map with this year's map, and I'm gonna change between them so you can see how much difference there actually has been in the two maps. It's not that much. <laughs> so even from 2022 to now, the map really hasn't changed that much. There are sizes of campsites that have changed and little areas, but as you will see, um, not really that much change. So this is last year's map. And if I slowly bring this over, you will see it start to morph into this year's map. So if I go all the way over, that's this year's map. That's last year's map. And here is somewhere sort of in between. So um, yeah, not really that much difference. Obviously the um, the blue camp is that was there is now the uh, West Car Park. Uh, yellow's been extended out here. 
um, oh, sorry, yellow has been extended to here and blue has been taken over um, what used to be yellow. But if you look, I won't look at this too much because I know it can look confusing for some people. But as you can see, most stuff is overlapping. RIPs moved a little bit, um, mainly due to the size of maps that they actually do. But as you can see, everything is pretty much in the same place apart from a few little bits and bobs um, changing. So I'll do it again. That was last year's. Then I'll slowly move it over and it will morph into this year's map. So not that much difference. Uh, now let's look at the map in a little bit more detail. Right, okay, let's have a look at the map in some detail then. This would have been really the first time I've properly zoomed in on it and actually had a look. Apart from the main things that stood out to me, I have not looked at this map in any detail. So this is gonna be a learning curve for me as well. Um, I'll try and zoom in enough so it doesn't blur that much for you guys because uh, I've got two screens here, so they are slightly different. So let's just start over uh, by the West Car Park. Now, there's been a lot of debate over the West Car Park and whether general campers can camp in there. My understanding, and from what I've seen from other people, general campers are allowed to go into West Car Park. You may be directed to other car parks, depending on where you're coming from. Um, but if you're coming from the west, you're probably most likely to be go heading towards the west car park to begin with. Uh, but it is also for mini moshers, quiet camp, uh, and guest campsite, as far as, I, as far as I'm aware. Um, but we're heading towards the west because we live in the west, um, and that's just the way that we actually go. So my sister and my nephew are actually staying in the mini moshers as well. Um, and I'm gonna give her, her one of my cameras. So I'm gonna get her to vlog her uh, mini mosher experience, which I'm gonna include in this year's vlog. So we should get another, you know, just another view of the festival from a different angle, which should be pretty cool. Hopefully she um, is decent at filming. Um, but Blue Campsite has changed considerably uh, because if you looked at the other photo we had, this was all blue last year. Uh, there was no blue up here, that was all yellow. Um, and this bit from there across was pretty much all blue. Um, so what they've done is extended the West Car Park because it did get full rather early last year. Uh, and then they've extended it up past um, the hill this is this bit here is a hill it dips down for black comes up uh, i'm not sure what's up the top here uh, but i don't think hopefully we'll be going that far up blue but we will be aiming for blue camp um just fyi um let's have a look at some of these things there so obviously toilets water and baby changing in the mini moshers of course recycling points yeah water and all that stuff uh, the campsite manager um, and i think there's going to be some food stalls in there as well so yeah it is different to what it was. Um, I think black as well has been changed slightly because the uh, guest campsite and guest car park have been adjusted as well. So I feel like blue and black will be smaller than they were last year, um, just due to, I think they're probably gonna mo make most people go into the North car park and they're gonna try and fill up purple and red because they are by far the biggest campsites. So black is a little bit smaller and blue is can it might be the same size just adjusted up but it's can it's not taking over as much of the west car park as it was um anyway we will scroll down to well i mean one of the biggest sections and just keeps growing and growing and growing i think we did get a number um when we were talking to members of the download team i think it's five to six thousand people now that do rip um, which is quite a large number really considering the price of it that the price has been the only thing stopping me from doing it and I think that I don't know I just I feel good about being in general camping um, it might be different when the baby comes along obviously because um, we're going to want more comfort and more places <clears throat> you know to just have a baby somewhere so um, so yeah, things might change, but at the moment, the price is the only thing putting me off RIP because um, it can get quite expensive. Um, but yeah, we've got the, the Metal Car Park, uh, the Metal Car Park 2, uh, RIP um, Park Farm, of course, which I'm sure some of you have heard, uh, Sleepy Hollow, which I think is like their version of the quiet campsite. And then we got the two Metal Meadows. District 1, I don't know what that is. Um, I can't see anything on there telling you what district one is so i don't know you guys can tell me that because uh, i don't really know that much rip is probably the the least knowledge of download that i have and i'm sure you guys know i have a fair bit is about rip like i i barely know anything about rip just because i haven't really taken any notice of it because i've never been a part of it so um and i know some of you guys just do rip 
constantly um, and that's cool but yeah I just never have so I don't know much about it. so you guys tell me about RIP this year because I, yeah, I don't know much um, moving up to obviously one of the main parts of the festival these days um, being the entertainment outside of that exactly what this video is about so you know the doghouse district x uh, the den the outpost so we have loads and loads of stuff in there let me zoom in a bit more i don't want it to be too blurry for you guys uh it shouldn't be that'll be fine um yes yeah, so we have the outpost stage what we were talking about where they have all of the um cooking demos and stuff of course we have the doghouse which if you don't know is like the big club basically um and they have other stuff on there in the day but in the evening it becomes the big club where everyone goes to have, have a little dance, uh, which is good. So some market stalls, um, obviously there'll be rides as well. So that's pretty much the same setup as there was last year. Um, District X and a couple of other bits around here. Uh, the Den, which will be another stage, I believe, um, having podcasts and all sorts of stuff on. Uh, the Ace of Spades Bar, which is another bar that's there as well. Um, the co-op looks like it's in a similar place. That might have been the exact same place that it was last year, actually. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, the co-op is back, which is fantastic. Um, and there's some other stuff around there as well. I think they have um, some Samaritans and some other stuff around there. Uh, let me just scroll down. Yeah, they have lo loads of stuff there. A lot of um, charities do stuff around there as well. So there'll be, I think last time they had like a um, secondhand band t-shirt stall, which is tons of band t-shirts, which unfortunately I didn't get a chance to look at yesterday. And I... I'm a sucker for a secondhand shop, so I don't know why I wasn't in there um, looking at loads of t-shirts. So I might try and get in there early this time and see if I can grab myself a couple of deals. Um, but yeah, so again, on hard stand, I know they've put it in green. Uh, I think they've done that just to make it stand out, but it is on hard standing ground. So if we do have a really, really bad weather year, we can all still go to the doghouse. We can all still be a part of District X and all the things happening, which is fantastic. So one of the best things that Downard have ever done is put this exactly where it is. Obviously, when the festival was further to the east, um, it was more difficult to do that because there was less hard standing ground apart from the racetrack, um, which they used to have stalls on, but I'm guessing that the uh, racetrack don't want loads of um, dirty grebos all over their lovely racing track anymore. Um, we'll go up first again. So eco camping and green campsite. So again, yeah, an eco style of camping. I don't quite know how all the ins and outs of that work. Um, but I'm guessing it'd be something of, you know, you have to put your rubbish in certain places. You have to keep this site very tidy, uh, which is a great thing as well. Um, Camping Plus, which is, I believe, the upgrade in between RIP and normal camping. Not sure what extras you get with that. Again, you guys could tell me that. So tell me down in the comments what you get. Um, I think Dippy Donutters, um, some amazing YouTubers that you guys really need to check out. Um, they are doing Camping Plus as I understand it. So um, I'll be excited to hear their experience um, of Camping Plus and exactly what it's like. But they'll probably have, yeah, nice showers and nicer toilets, I would have thought would have been one of the main reasons for that. Um, then as we move over, of course, we have the big boy campsites and the big boy car park. So we've got the North car park, which is split into two this time, I'm not sure how they're gonna do all that or if there's entrance, it says there there's two gates. So I'm guessing they're just gonna push everyone forward to the to the small bit first um, and then fill out the big bit after, I don't know. Um, but the two biggest campsites are here. So purple will be a massive campsite and so will red. So anyone coming in from the north, you'll be told to either go to orange, which is slightly smaller, uh, purple or red campsites. So I'm guessing they will fill up pretty big and if you're in purple yeah that's going to be rammed but i'm sure the vibe in purple and red will be awesome so kind of jealous about that when you're all the way over in blue it's a little bit dead in the evenings i'm not going to lie um but still sick um but yeah there's the east entrance as well so that i think that's pretty much around actually around here i think is the old main entrance that you used to walk over to so we've got the transport hub uh, where you'll be dropped off uh, or if you come on the bus they'll be dropped off there and then you just walk um, I've been on the bus twice to download 2006 and 2013 and it's awesome I actually enjoyed getting the coach it was great fun you can't take as much stuff with you because obviously you don't have a car to carry it all but it is a lot of fun so yeah respect all you people coming on the bus um, obviously you've got the race what the racetrack what was the arena so before we move into the arena if you didn't know 
This is where the main part of the festival used to happen, right in the middle of the racetrack. I think the main stage must have been about there somewhere. And you had the second stage over here then the third stage over here. It was great fun. But um, yeah, unfortunately, due to changes to the track, uh, download, we're not allowed to do that anymore. Uh, and they had a transitional year where the stage was over here and it was horrendous. Uh, imagine if you were camping in Red Campsite and you had to walk all the way to pretty much the West Car Park just to see bands. It was awful. Uh, but obviously they've moved it to where it is now. But yeah, inside of the track though, we've got the Refresh Retreat, which I know people were finding really, really hard to find last year. Um, so I don't know how you get into it. Um, I know a few people that we were camping with were like, where is this place? How did you get into it? And it was a bit of a mystery. So just make sure you look for the signs for the refresh retreat because um, yeah, it wasn't easy to find last year. Um, Ready to Rock, which is another version of camping. And of course the Camper Van Plus camping inside the racetrack, which is awesome. I would love to camp in the racetrack. I bet that would be really cool. And I could um, find some spots where the old stages used to be. That'd be great fun. Now let's, oh, we'll go around. We'll go to the arena last, okay? We'll go around the sides. So um, you've got the white gate, which is buses and coaches, blue gate for accessibility, uh, and the south car park, uh, being from London, that's the car park that we used to get into and used to just walk across the road and get in. But now the south car park is not for weekend, it's for car, uh, day and weekend arena tickets only. So if you're weekend campers, you cannot go to the South Car Park, which I think is fair. But um, walking over the bridge is a classic memory of mine. Um, there's a little bridge there. Walking over that is classic times, uh, old school down. And if you know about the bridge, you know about the bridge, you're old school. Um, and then we have the uh, campers, camper vans and caravans, which you can see when you're standing looking at the main stage. If you look to your left, uh, slightly raised up because we're on a hill, you will see all of the camper vans and that is the camper vans and caravans area that you're seeing. Um, it's pretty cool to see all those guys there. I would love to do download in a camper van one year. Um, I think it would be a hell of a lot of fun, but from what I understand, the tickets go super quick. So you have to already have a camper van. You can't just like buy a ticket, then rent one because you don't know if you're gonna get one. But anyway, I'm, I, I digress. Um, Let's go to the um, accessibility uh, campsite as well, which is lovely and close. So um, big up all the people in accessible camping. Um, yeah, nice and close, perfect. Absolutely perfect for you guys. Hopefully um, accessibility will be good. I've heard, you know, negatives and positives. I think Download really do try and do their best uh, when it comes to accessibility. Uh, but at a festival, it is hard just because it's a festival. There's so much ground my mouse just moved without me touching it. There's so much ground, um, you know, for you to cover, um, especially if, you know, you're, your d disability or if you're the reason you're in accessibility is your ease of not getting around easily, um, it can be quite difficult. So um, I would say just, you know, just give Download a little bit of a break because I, I really do think that they try um, with the accessibility as much as they possibly can. But at least it's nice and close. Um, and it looks like you guys have got loads of stuff in there as well, including stalls, um, yeah, toilets, showers, food. You got everything in there. So hopefully you guys are sorted. Um, and finally, we move on to the main arena, which looks as if it is a standard download setup so this this setup has pretty much not changed since 2009 um the opus stage looks like it's further over no okay it's not that's weird um yeah dog two stage apex stage opus stage and uh, avalanche these stages have all been in pretty much the same place for quite a long time now it really works um the hill, big hill is perfect for the second stage and the first stage. Dog two stage stuck in that top left hand corner is perfect. And having the avalanche stage just out of the way, it all works. Um, I think it was way worse when we didn't have this gap in the middle. So before, if I zoom in, it probably will get a bit fuzzy. But when you go from the Opus stage or the second stage, they never used to have this gap here. So you, what you would have done is had to walk all the way round to that stage. But then they worked out that this is getting silly now. So eventually they put that in. I think they put that in about 2016 or 17. But they did not have that for a number of years um, and it was highly annoying. But yeah, all the normal sort of stuff. 
So the, the guest area looks like, obviously it's in the same place by the main stage. Um, the lounge, uh, which I think is a big bar area that you can sit and go to. That might have been the one that I was in last year. I can't remember. Um, but you've got loads of accessibility platforms uh, in there. We've got rides. We've got shops. Of course, you've got the welfare tents as well um, at the top. Um, just everything, basically. Everything in here that you would need and download normally have. Uh, but if you're new to download, anything you would expect would be in there. You can get food, you can get drinks, you can buy clothes, you can go on rides, watch bands, obviously. Um, so they do have everything covered. They have water points, uh, toilets scattered around. I think most of the toilets are in, yeah, pretty much the same places they were. Now, again, it's a hot topic with download whether the uh, toilets themselves should be split by gender because it seems to be that the guys' toilets you wait ages to queue for and even though for some reason it, you would have thought it would take a, a, a woman longer to go to the toilet, uh, but for the cubicles, the guys' queues are, are terrible, but they do do urinals as well, but they can get absolutely disgusting very quickly. So I'm just warning you, um, if you don't like peeing around a lot of people or you don't like the smell of wee, you might not like the urinal so much. Um, but it is the quickest way to go to the toilet if you're a dude. Girls, obviously you have to wait uh, for the cubicles themselves. Um, but hopefully there shouldn't be that many queues. It's, it's not gonna be a massive sellout like it was last year. It should be much more sparse than that. So there shouldn't be as mental queuing for the toilets as there was last year. But don't quote me on that because we ain't there yet. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not really that much more to say about it because it is so similar, the arena, to every other year. I would just say that it's a system that really works. Um, there'll be a couple of extra little things in there, I'm sure. Um, we'll quickly go down the list to see if anything st uh, stands out to us. So uh, yeah, so bars. So obviously, of course, yeah, Big, Big Green Coach is fantastic. Uh, when we went in 2006, obviously a long time ago, Big Green Coach were doing stuff, I think, but it was on a very, very small level and we got a really expensive National Express. So Big Green Coach, that's amazing. Um, yeah, so cocktail bars, you can get cigarettes and vapes in there. They have charge candy. So if all of your, if any of your stuff is running out um, or you don't have a portable charger on you, uh, these guys will charge any of your devices for you, obviously for a cost. Uh, of course, we've got the co-op, we've got drinking water, fairground rides, uh, Oxfam, that's what I was trying to think of earlier when I was thinking about the charities, uh, the merch mega store. Um, yeah, look, this festival has so much stuff. It's amazing. Um, so it's really cool just to see this festival grow and grow and grow. And when you look at a map like that, you just think, wow, it's awesome that we're going to this thing and that we can all share it together and just have a great time. So yeah, tell me what you think about the map. I know it's not that much different to what it was last year, um, but I do feel like Download are getting a lot of things right. Hopefully the traffic situation won't be as bad as last year. I don't think it will be just due to the amount of people coming and obviously there being two days for people to turn up rather than one, where last year, of course, we had four days of music, so most people were coming on the Wednesday. I think now it will be split across people turning up on the Wednesday and people turning up on the Thursdays. So I think that will ease the traffic and it won't be even near as bad. But yeah, the map is looking good. Yeah, so there you go, guys. Just a little chat about everything else happening around the music at the festival. Tons of stuff happening, right? It's gonna be so much fun. Even if you haven't got a band to watch, you know, or if you've got a few hours gap in some bands or just on the Thursday and Friday, there is so much to do at this festival. They've made it so good and interactive for all of us to do loads of cool stuff. So I recommend just go and check out as much stuff as you can, as much stuff as you can to get a good overall look at this festival. I'm gonna be walking around on the Wednesday and trying to absorb as much of it as I possibly can. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to it now. You know, we're only seven days away as I'm filming this. Um, by the time you guys watch it, we'll probably be down to about five days. Um, so yeah, and it's getting to that point now where you're like, yes, download's right around the corner. Um, so I've said it before, but I'll say it again. If you see me at the festival, I am very approachable. If you've never met me before, come up and say hello. I would love to grab a photo with you. Um, I want to do what I did last year where I put my photos with everyone that I met at the end of the vlog. So if you see me, come and say hello, even if it's just just two minute chat and get a photo. Fantastic. I would love to see all you guys there. And yeah, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you to everyone that has. I love all you guys so much. And I shall see you dudes in the next video. You should go and subscribe to my channel just because. Come on, subscribe.